Hi guys, welcome to my studio. Uh, today I thought I would do a demo on how I make um, coffee pour overs. So you brought a couple of examples out, uh, both the mug and the pour over funnel. Um, these two are the same, except for that the handle's a little bit different. Um, I throw these in one piece, and um, so I'm gonna show you that way of doing it. Although admittedly there are multiple ways of doing it, and you might have a better way and you might see a different way, um, whatever works best for you. I like to trim, and so this way works really good for me. If you're not a person who likes to trim, you might not like this way at all. So there's definitely ways to do it with less trimming. Um, I would say that this is also a project that is really good for like intermediate level um, uh, throwers. So. Pretty tough to do if you're a beginner, but if you're just making that transition, it's not so hard. It's not too tough a leap. So it would be a good challenge for you. Um, it's not a lot of clay. So uh, when it's not a lot of clay, that usually makes it a little bit easier to throw. Um, but the getting the thicknesses right, uh, particularly at the joint here, and then also being able to trim it uh, effectively is a little bit tricky. So let me show you just what they look like when they're finished. So you can see the funnel comes down and then it has this sort of saucer-like attached to it. And then a foot ring that's very towards the middle and then of course the hole for the water to come through. That shorter foot ring is so that it fits inside the muck. And then this one is made the same way and you can actually see all those parts here as well. The only difference between these two other than the glazing is the type of handle. So lug handle here and then a strap handle here. So uh, I'm gonna go ahead and get my space set up and then I will show you how I make them. Okay, I'm at my wheel, I'm all set up. Um, I wanted to show you before I get started, I'm using a stoneware clay. This is about a pound and a half of clay, which works really well for me for this project. So let me tilt this so that you can see the wheel. There we go. All right, you don't have to look at me anymore. So here, here we go. Okay, also on the wheel head, you can see I've used a bat. Uh, for those of you who are uninitiated, the bat is um, just really a, a flat piece of wood or plastic or something that's able to take off of the wheel head, the pot, um, without damaging it. Um, I don't like using bats very much for small pieces, but for this project, it's necessary. So I got the bat down. And I'm not gonna explain everything about throwing, but I'll try to sort of stop at key moments. So I'm gonna start by centering the clay. And normally I would center kind of a bit like that, but for this project, I'm gonna actually make this much wider and lower. What I'm actually doing by centering this way is I'm setting the width of the um, that bottom saucer-like part. So it's got to be about probably five, five and a half inches wide. So you can see my centering now is very, very low. I'm going to leave this part on the wheel head and then I'm going to start to actually pull this part back. To the middle. So this will be the saucer. So right here is going to be the dish. So I'm going to squeeze that in. Okay, so you can see my two parts are already set. This technique is actually a technique you can use not just for pour overs but for a simple lid with a knob uh, or Back in the 80s and 90s, when I was first coming to school, it was a huge fad to make um, a dip and salsa, like a chip and salsa dish. And that was like a big plate. And then you would come in and you would do this and you'd make a bowl in the middle. Almost the same idea as the pour over the way that I'm doing it. Just bigger. Okay, so now I've got this part in the middle centered and then I'm going to flatten that just a little bit. Oops, had a little bump. It's okay. Make sure that you get 
all that you can here. You don't want to leave a really, really, really thick spot there. So now I'm just going to open this like I would any normal bowl. I'm going to open a hole down to in the middle that's the same height as this. And now I'm just going to pinch and pull. Now, if you are a beginner, oftentimes beginners make the mistake of when they do their pull, they it gets really, really thin on top and really, really thick down here. I'm trying to keep it the same thickness with extra thickness at the top. Since this is a bowl, this is going, I want to expand this out. And if this gets thin, there's nowhere to expand it. So one thing I would suggest, particularly on this project is compressing the lip and making sure that the lip is extra thick, thicker than the wall around it. At the end, you can actually thin it out if you want. So there's a second pull. And again, I want to compress the lip and make sure it's nice and thick. My sponge here. I'm having to pull with just my fingers because it's so tiny. Okay, you can also see that the wheel is getting slower. So I never, I never, my students kind of laugh at me sometimes because I never like to throw fast anyway. Um, that's maybe another video topic, but as the clay gets wider, the centrifugal force gets stronger, so you have to um, slow down the wheel. So be careful about getting excited and going faster. That's a common, um, a common mistake when you're just starting out. For the uninitiated, my uh, knee here and I'm on the foot pedal and so I'm actually controlling the speed of the wheel with the foot pedal much like um, the accelerator in a car okay, I'm almost there I'm just gonna do a little bit more shaping when you pull I really suggest also that you don't try to pull a curve when you're making a bowl. There's a temptation to try to pull the clay and make a curve at the same time. I think you're actually better off making a straight line, even if the line doesn't, the line doesn't have to go up and down, it can go out. Make a straight line and then after it's out, then you use a rib to shape and make the curve. It'll save you a lot of collapsing. Okay, so you kind of get the basic gist of it already. You can really see it. I'm gonna do just a little bit more shaping. I'm gonna see if I can get a little bit more clay first. Now, proportionally, it's starting to look more like what I'm expecting. This is the height and relationship of the bowl to the saucer is starting to look right. So since I use the same amount of clay for each of these, I can start to eyeball um, and know that I'm getting close to what I want. Okay, I'm going to use my rib here very carefully to just run across this and shape it a little bit on the outside. I'm also getting rid of the throwing lines on the outside, which I like for what I'm doing, but is not necessary. It just depends on what kind of shape you're making. Now I'm going to shape the inside. I'm actually going to shape from the top down. So I'm going to take the top rim, fold it out a little bit, and then guide the rest of the rib down towards the middle until we get all the way to the point. Okay, that one more time. Just going to slightly flip that down and then run it down all the way in. Great. Take the water out. Wasn't a whole lot. Take the water off the sides. Okay, one last thing. I'm going to use this wooden tool, although a wooden knife would do too. I'm just going to make a little bit of a notch underneath here. Okay, 
gets rid of a little bit of extra clay, makes it easy to cut off the wheel. So, wire tool, cut. the bolt. So that's basically it. You can see this is very, very thick right now. Uh, this is going to be trimmed later. So I'll, this will have to set up for a day tomorrow. I'll make a bunch of these today and then tomorrow I'll start trimming them. So I'll show you that tomorrow. Uh, this is how I get the bat off the wheel. I just wedge that under. Okay, there it is. I'll make one more at regular speed instead of trying to talk through it so you can kind of just review what this looks like. Okay, here we go. Center, flatten, leave a lot on the wheel head, and then take the middle part and make a bowl or make a center ball. Open that up, throw a bolt, compress the lip, Slow the wheel down as it gets wider. Keep the lip compressed. And then refine the shape with a rib. doing just a little bit more shaping to this saucer. I'm gonna cut a trim a little bit there. That's it. So there we go. 
All right, everybody. Thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed it. And um, I'll finish this tomorrow. I'll post another video. See you later. Bye.